Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back again. Um, our next uh, session is a keynote presentation. It is my uh, great pleasure to introduce uh, Colin Jennings uh, from Cisco, who will uh, be talking about uh, Cisco latest initiative uh, intercompany uh, media engine. So with this, and, and as, as before, please, any questions, uh, Twitter, ask, ask the uh, speaker button, and so on, please ask questions. Our speakers will be delighted to answer them. So with this, uh, Colin, please go ahead. I will show the presentation in a second. Thank you, Anatoly. That's a pleasure to be talking to people here today. Um, I'm going to be talking about a, uh, a product that we're releasing called Internet, uh, Internet Media Engine. Um, but it's more really about the, the underlying technology behind this, which is technology we're calling Viper and we'll be standardizing. I'll be talking a little bit more about that, that later. Now, one of the um, real you know, key issues that we've been dealing with in, in, in various um, environments is um, more and more we communicate with all kinds of different people. Right? We're not just communicating with people inside of our company. We're also communicating uh, a lot with people uh, at various companies. So next slide, if someone can uh, forward, this, uh, forward the slides for me here. Um, <clears throat> we don't just uh, deal with, you know, we, we have lots of our systems where we do video calls that we've been talking about all, all day here um, inside of, um, a company. Um, but it, it's less common to do them with other companies. And the type of business relationships that we're having with people now uh, require more and more communications really you know, across the internet. It might be with suppliers that we're working with, might be with temporary workers, might be with partners, might be an event like this where we're trying to collaborate with other uh, companies, vendors, customers, et cetera, to try and, and, and bring stuff together. Now, with with all of these systems, um, I'm sorry, Colin. Hold on a second. For some reason, sure, sure. I have an issue with with the presentation. Just one second, please. Uh, you know, there's there's always fun and excitement on, on any presentation, of getting stuff up. Um, <laughs> it's the great part of this technology. <laughs> one one sec. Calvino. Well, you keep playing with that for a minute. I get those, those slides up, but I'll, I'll keep sort of um, explaining some of the stuff we're talking about. Um, so today, when we start looking at the type of things that we have uh, working inside of a company and, and going there, um, we, have, we have a lot of features on our phones. I mean, I've got video phones on my desk. Um, when I just dial one of my other coworkers that happens to have a video phone, I, I get video. Right? It just, just happens automatically. I, I do what I always do, um, I just use the system normally, and I get more features. Um, we're seeing features like wideband audio, um, that's you know, improving recognition rates on conference calls. Um, we're getting features inside of companies like um, the ability to, to get visual presence about people, um, good presence information, understand when they're busy, understand when they're on a call, when they're not on a call, um, be able to wait until they're off a call and then fall back and, and reach them. And there's, there's a lot of different types of um, information that we, we, we get from people these days inside of it, a single enterprise, inside of a sort of unified communication system that's fairly, fairly well integrated. Now, where this really starts to fall apart is where that's most valuable, all of these services to me, like video. It's, it's, it's working with somebody who's not in the, you know, three doors down from me who's I talk to every day. That's not the time I need video the most. Time I need video the most is when I'm communicating with someone. Perhaps we don't even speak the same language, and we're, we're you know we're working with translators and other things. You know, a lot of it's those types of environments where where video starts to add a lot more, or where I have a conference call with lots of people. So, all those types of environments um, are between companies or between enterprises, between organizations, between different domains. It's those types of environments that are um, most important and for getting a lot of these new features that we're getting. And today, for the most part, what we get on those is absolutely nothing. We get the minimal that the PSTN will provide. We just get voice, maybe caller ID if we're lucky. 
broken half the time on, or not half the time, but it's broken quite often on cell phones uh, internationally anyway. Um, you know, we're not even getting that basic feature. So when we just get voice, we lose all of this, and we lose it in exactly the places that we need it most. So, um, any luck with the slides there? Is that, uh, no, I'm still not, still getting any. Um, One sec, no, I'm, I'm still having a problem. Okay, please keep talking. I'm, I'm sorry. No problem. Um, yeah, this is, you know, this is the best part of new technologies, right? I'm almost glad to see conferences go and try new things, but um, there's, there's some wrinkles in things at times, so I'm glad, glad to keep this rolling along. So when we uh, reduce down to these, these voice systems, uh, voice only, um, you know, that's, that's a real problem. And we've all seen this in our various companies that are, uh, that are presenting things here today of, of issues of when we try and roll out video. We can get to work some of the time for some of the people, but it's harder to make it just a pervasive thing that people use all of the time. So what Cisco started doing was looking at what are really the barriers to that? How can we make it so the places where all of these are most valuable work and work just easily? And we started thinking about, well, how do users enter information? What is it that they do when they want to initiate a call? What are, what are the namespaces they use? How do, how do we address? How do you know you want to have contacts with people? And clearly this is changing over time. Things like um, Facebook or, or systems like this, um, Jabber, XMPP, all of these are making us more comfortable using web systems to help find and initiate communications and deal with other people. But the bulk of business communications today are initiated using telephone numbers. That's the address that we all have. If you go searching through your address book, you probably have a lot of email addresses in it, but you probably have more phone numbers. Um, if you go and look at advertising for people, there might be a web address. You might be able to find what you want there. There'll definitely be a phone number. Um, if phone numbers are a very common way that we use for initiating communications. And we have a, a long-term understanding of them. We understand how to walk up to a phone, dial a number. You can walk up to nearly any phone you've ever seen and have a fairly good idea how to dial a number on it. Um, the user interface has enough consistency across all of them that you just know how to initiate it. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're a common technology user or you don't use technology, you understand how to dial a phone number. So we wanted to look at, well, how can we make this feature that everyone's currently using, of phone numbers, work well into a modern media environment? I mean, phone numbers were traditionally, they were there to make a phone call, which is great, but how do we make it so you can do a lot more than just a phone call with them? How do we make it so that you can um, initiate video communications or, or, or any of these other sort of modern features that we're building into communications and collaboration systems. So that was roughly where we where we got when we started building this IME system. The, uh, the, the, the essence of an IME system um, or this internet IME product that we've, we've built is, is this underlying micro technology and I'll talk about how it works in a minute but I want to first of all sort of talk about what are the key features of it? And later I'll talk about standardization of it and how we hope that other companies will um, start using it, um, dealing with it, building it into their products. So some of the key points of it is we want people to just be able to walk up to their device, which might be a telepresence system, it might be a video phone, it might just be a normal phone that did HD audio. Dial a phone number like they'd always done before. And if the other person at the far end also had a device that was capable of that type of environment, just get the advantage of, this, of it and be able to use it. So that, um, you know, that, that was a key part of it. We had to have it that it was manageable and deployable and into existing systems so that it wasn't a big deal for the IT people to go and deal with it, turn it on. It needed to enable this stuff across the internet, so it needed to be secure. We built a lot of effort making sure that it was uh, secure from the beginning. It's one of the things that we think is, is quite different than some other uh, technologies. Um, initially, you know, we've been talking earlier today, someone talks about how things start in the, um, the, the non-business type, you know, consumer to consumer type usage, like Facebook or something like that. And then as they get brought into the enterprise, they have to become more secure. This is one that's inherently about business to business communication start. So security was, was a key thing from the beginning. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, some of the key parts of it. We needed it so that when you started uh, going from one user, uh, 